So I, I really um, want to thank the organizers very, very much for having invited me um, to, to this interesting workshop. And uh, in particular, I want to thank them for organizing such a very interesting workshop uh, on, on Mendel. And I completely agree with Ellen Franklin that Mendel is one of the greatest scientists, at least for me. So I cannot, cannot say that I am um, not biased when I talk about Mendel. Um, yes, uh, I was asked to talk about Mendel and Lysenko, and I asked to add Darwin because it really provides a better understanding um, of, of the Lysenko part of the story. So, um, and I will start now with the three quotations. And the problem is that I cannot read, because of this line, um, I cannot read the, um, the first line. So, but, but you can read it. So I don't maybe uh, don't have to read it. So uh, the first quotation is from 1859. Everybody knows what it is, of course. And it, um, it is about the role of chance. And it is a, a wholly incorrect um, expression that uh, I, I, my results are due to chance, but it serves to acknowledge plainly our ignorance. I do not believe that variability is an inherent and necessary contingency. Second, it remains therefore purely a matter of chance which of the two sorts of pollen be will become united with each separate egg cell. According, however, to the law of probability and so on, quotation from 1865. Third, we biologists do not take the slightest interest in mathematical calculations which confirm the, the useless statistical formula of the Mendelists. We do not want to submit to blind chance. We maintain that biological regularities do not resemble biological uh, um, mathematical laws. So um, the first quotation, of course, is by Darwin, second by Mendel, and the third by Lysenko, some 80 years after Darwin. And um, we should remember in that year when Lysenko made that statement, the Soviet government finally banned all teaching and research in genetics. Within a year, the doctrine of agro agronomist Trofim Lysenko, dubbed Soviet creative uh, Darwinism, replaced genetics in curricula and research plans of biological, medical, and veterinary and agricultural institutions, as uh, historian Kremensov wrote. So my goals here in this 20 or so minutes is to compare Darwin's and Mendel's views on heredity, second to present Lysenko's anti-genetic doctrine in the context of the then popular Marxist Darwinism in the USSR, and third to analyze ideological and other reasons underlying doc uh, Lysenko's doctrine and its revival in the 1990s. I start with, uh, with Mendel. Uh, I don't have to say much about Mendel anymore. Um, and uh, now I anticipated this also. Um, in my opinion, his law governing the formation and development of hybrids was the most prominent example of a successful biological model in the 19th century. And uh, it explained the complex feature of hybridization by the behavior of hypothetical elements of heredity in a quantitative way. And by that, and this uh, can be seen in the, in the uh, fertilization scheme and uh, the, the later equation, uh, he provided not only a clearly quantitative description, as many people at that, at that time, I think Sander Lieber mentioned Humboldt and others uh, did, but he also provided a causal explanation. This fertilization scheme is, as far as I know, used more or less in the same way today by, by breeders, for example. And the binomial, quasi binomial formula in the end is not exactly correct. You can see this, but I don't want now to, to go into this. Robert Olby has written about it, and, um, but he, let's say, came close to this kind of formula. Um, so, and uh, Mendel in his, uh, in his paper, uh, as was now emphasized already several times, he used statistical laws and the concept of probability. The quotation from my first slide 
um, where it, where that starts, it remains a purely a matter of chance, which of the two sorts of pollen will become united with each separate egg cell is uh, continuous. According uh, to the law of probability, it will always happen on the average of many cases that each uh, particular kind, uh, kind of pollen form will unite equally often with each particular kind of egg cell. So in this way, he really solved the problem of chance without denying it. Um, so his model used distinct invisible elements to explain discrete as in dominant recessive and also blending as in intermediate traits phenomena of inheritance. And as I said before, unlike other uh, quantitative models at this time, uh, it was not, uh, his model was not purely descriptive, but it was also causal. And um, as we heard also today, it gave rise to the concept of gene uh, by, by Johansson in 1909, for the time who um, defined it for the time being only uh, something like a unit of calculation that became one of the most powerful abstractions in biology. I mean, this is important to understand what I'm saying later. So we have uh, characteristics of his model are quantitation, causal reductionism, and abstraction. Second, Darwin's concept of variation and heredity. Um, as we all know, Darwin proposed a materialistic theory of evolution uh, in the origin of species. Um, the problem is that, or the problem for him was that he could not provide true causes for the generation of new species. True causes, this was um, a criticism um, among others by, by Herschel, the as astronomer, whom he, Darwin appreciated very much. True causes means, means necessary and sufficient. Darwin could not. Darwinists also today cannot. Anyhow, but partly as a response to this criticism, Darwin tried to minimize in, indeterminacy and chance. Uh, and second, he included the inheritance of environmental effects and use and disuse in his notions of inheritance. As in the quotation in the beginning, I don't believe that variability is uh, uh, an inherent and necessary contingency. And also that uh, I think that there can be little doubt that use strengthens and enlarges certain parts and disuse diminishes them and that such modifications are inherited. Uh, in his uh, hypothesis of pangenesis, uh, stated um, nine years uh, after the origin, Darwin aimed at setting up a unifying explanation for phenomena of heredity, variation, and development. Uh, and uh, pangenesis means um, that cells or units of the whole body throw off minute granules which are dispersed through the whole system. And these uh, granules dis constitute the sexual elements and are ultimately developed into units like those from which they were originally derived. That means the whole body is involved in inheritance. It was not a very original hypothesis. Many of his contemporaries like Spencer had similar um, hypotheses, but in particular, uh, Hippocrates or some in his school uh, came up with something very, very similar to Darwin some 2000 years earlier. So when we compare Ma uh, Darwin and Mendel, I mean, only in uh, regard to inheritance, I'm not talking now about evolution, so uh, Mendel had a causal reductionist explanation, finally of heredity. Uh, I know Sander Glebov made it clear in the beginning it was hybridization, but later it could be introduced into the frame of, of um, genetics, uh, genetic research. Uh, and hereditary ele elements were transmitted by germ cells. Whereas Darwin uh, proposed an un completely untestable holistic theory of heredity and development, in which heredity was not only related to germ cells, but to the whole body. Uh, then um, Mendel solved the problem of randomness with probability theory and the statistical evaluation, whereas uh, Darwin uh, uh, marginalized the role of chance because it contradicted his, um, his ideas. And uh, also he uh, did not provide any statistical evaluation. So I'm coming now to my third point. Lysenko's doctrine of inheritance, and uh, I will also briefly talk about the destruction of genetics in the USSR. Uh, Lysenko was an agronomist from the Ukraine, 
he was not a scientist and he felt himself a victim of the academic biologists who did not appreciate him. Uh, he rose to power in the 1930s and became the absolute leader of biology in the Soviet Union under Stalin uh, for many decades. Uh, Lysenko became famous after an experiment in his remote station, Azerbaijan, on, um, I think in Russia, is uh, Russian is Jarovization, English Venalization, in 1928, uh, in which he treated winter wheat seeds with moisture and cold in order to induce them to produce a crop in spring as well. Uh, he did not invent this, um, this method. It was uh, used also in some countries in the West, for example, in, in Germany, but people gave it up because um, usually when you do something like that, fungi uh, develop and, and you cannot use the, the seeds anymore. But uh, okay, he seems to have used it and um, his results were sensationalized in Pravda. And what happened then was something that brought him um, away from uh, genetics and from the uh, academic biologists. Namely, he claimed that the vernalization effects are heritable and that plants can be re-educated. Uh, when we look at the scientific, why, why was it so important to be anti-genetic? I mean, that is uh, because the Soviet Union, the early Soviet Union had I had uh, many excellent geneticists, internationally renowned geneticists. So it was not that the whole country was anti-genetics, but uh, there was a strong movement against genetics. And the um, historical or ideological background for this is the following. Uh, uh, these are the following points. There was first the popularity of Darwin's idea among the liberal and revolutionary intelligentsia already in 19th century Russia. And this was uh, in their, um, they used it in their attempt to secularize Russia, pre free from the influence of the church. And then when in 1900, uh, the dispute between Darwinists and Mendelists arose everywhere, also in the West, uh, they, they became politicized in, uh, in Russia because Mendel was regarded as opposing Darwin and opposing a materialist viewpoint. So Mendel had to be um, uh, uh, opposed. And in the 1920s then, in the early Soviet Union, there were massive campaigns to popularize both Marxism and Darwinism, despite, uh, as I said, despite the high standards of population genetics um, at that time. And the economic background for Lysenko's doctrine and the support he received was the devastating situation in Soviet agriculture after the large-scale collectivization of private farms. Of course, Lysenko's uh, methods uh, made it even worse, but for, at, the first, in, at first it could, he could be praised as somebody who would solve these problems. Lysenko derived his ideas from pra practical agriculture and popular beliefs, and his way of working, I mean, working out his theory later on was uh, completely non-methodical, as uh, historian David Jurafsky has, uh, has pointed out. So for example, he uh, reported only successes, used extremely small samples. Uh, the samples were genetically heterogeneous and there were almost no controls. And Lysenko uh, modeled him, uh, his role model for Lysenko was Ivan Michurin, some 40 years before, uh, was born some 40 years before him, uh, he was a, who was a popular agricultural practitioner and breeder of fruit trees. And as uh, Michurin's assistant wrote, the main point in Michurin's teaching is not crossing or hybridization, but it is the role played by environment, the purposeful and directed training of hybrids, again, re-education of plants. And Lysenko actually wanted to be a successor of Michurin. Uh, and Michurin was um, in, in the, became in the Soviet Union celebrated as a follower, true follower of Darwin, the accomplisher of Darwin's idea of development. Darwin, uh, development here also in the meaning of development, um, ontogeny and, and uh, evolution. And uh, so he, uh, Yakovlev again wrote, 
Darwin was uh, started this um, materialist, materialistic theory, but he could not indicate how to control evolution so as to create new forms of plants according to plan for the benefit of men. This task devolved upon Mitchurin. And through this, Mitchurin raised materialistic biology to a new higher stage and thereby laid the foundation of Soviet creative Darwinism. Uh, Lysenko, who, as I said, was before outside any politics or, uh, or academic disputes, he was, uh, his potential for ideology was soon realized by the party, and he was prompted by um, ideologues, in particular Isaac Present, to join the anti-genetic political campaigns, which Lysenko, Lysenko did with, uh, with pleasure. And we have to, to just um, realize that at that time, Classical genetics was a highly theoretical exact scientific discipline based on a few principles, for example, the distinction between genotype and phenotype. Uh, as Jurafsky wrote, like the atoms of Democritus and Newton's particles of light, the genes were apprehended by abstract thought. But, uh, and Lysenko's opposing Maturinism was uh, by, derived from pra practical agriculture and popular beliefs and uh, there was no science uh, behind. And this um, abstraction and this mathematical ideas behind were very uh, much uh, uh, opposing his, his uh, uh, ideas. And he received influence solely through political violence and through political terror. So a few points of Lysenko's genetics, so-called genetics, which was uh, really a quite heterogeneous um, conglomerate of ideas. He rejected the distinction between genotype and phenotype that he equated, equated with Mendelism, Morganism and Weismannism. Uh, he claimed that materialistic biology had to be holistic because heredity is inherent not only in chromosomes, in the chromosomes, but in any part of the living body. And here, of course, we, we are, and people like Leslie Dunn and others have been reminded of, of Darwin's pangenesis theory, who claimed the same. But whereas in Darwin's time, at Darwin's time, many of his contemporaries had similar ideas, and there was still yet no genetics, in Lysenko's case, it is purely pseudoscience, because um, the, the development, 80 years in between, uh, showed simply that this is uh, complete nonsense. Uh, yeah, another uh, characteristic of his genetics is that uh, he denied the relevance of mathematics and statistics and the idea of randomness, also here a parallel to, to, to Darwin. Um, and um, as he said, the so-called laws of Mendelism Morganism are based entirely on the idea of chance and uh, chance is the enemy of, 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 of science. So here, some of the similarities between Lysenko and Darwin's theories of heredity and development, both had materialistic and holistic conceptions of nature and biology, both rejected randomness, um, not to the same extent, but there was a strong dislike, and, and both combined with uh, natural selection with the inheritance of acquired characteristics and both made abundant use of folk concepts. Uh, starting in the mid 1930s, uh, Lysenko's doctrine became a dogma and political pressure on geneticists and genetics institution increased. The first lecture today already mentioned uh, Nikolai Vavilov, who was one of the early victims, I mean, before 1948, uh, who died of hunger in, in prison. Then there were the three uh, medical geneticists, Agol, Levin, and Levit, who were accused of, of various things. I mean, they were all Jewish, Jewish, and so some of them were also um, charged with connection with the Trotskyist conspiracy, and all were murdered. And um, uh, there were many others. I, I just mentioned these ones. And genetics then was fully defeated in August 1948 at a session of the Lenin All Union Academy of Agricultural Sciences, which was headed by Lysenko and personally directed by Stalin. 
And it, this session marked the USSR's commitment to developing a national science separated from the global scientific community. Interesting, interestingly, the proceedings of this three or, or, or week long session um, um, were uh, translated in many, many languages. I got an English and a German exemplar. And uh, because um, at that time, the, the, the political uh, authorities believed that Russian science, Russian genetics is much superior to the, to the West. And this, uh, here in English, it writes the situation in biological sciences. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I have just here this old uh, scan, which says, uh, sci um, by reading our science of Mendelism, Morganism, Weismannism, we will expel fortuities from biological science. Or uh, here, long live the Mitruian teaching, which shows how to transform living nature for the benefit of the Soviet people. Um, I'm not going now into the, the consequences which can be uh, imagined and for which I don't have a concrete figures, but uh, I cite now a recent paper by Borenskaya and, and, and others who wrote that viewed more broadly, this August session of the Lenin Academy of the Agricultural Sciences was part of a centuries long debate in Russia about national versus global culture. In the 1940s, this debate involved not only biology, but also science more generally. And the departure from international research in genetics was especially devastating, uh, uh, devastating in biology, sorry, that is missing, uh, affecting not only education and research, but also the provision of food. And um, at the time, I mean, only after Stalin died in 1953 and Khrushchev was removed from power in 1964, Lysenko finally lost government support, but uh, still his teaching went on in several uh, academies of science and, and also several universities. What is most, uh, let's say, uh, troubling today is that after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Lysenkoism in Russia was reborn. And, uh, and it became quite a strong movement, though it has not yet uh, taken over uh, as, as in 1946. And some people claim, though this is not the most dominant claim, but some people uh, over in Russia claimed that Lysenko's views are now confirmed by modern day epigenetics and that even Lysenko anticipated epigenetics and that Stalin should be lauded for his policies towards science. Of course, other Russian geneticists point to Lysenko's uh, incompetence and ignorance of statistical methods. But as uh, historian Lauren Graham wrote, the movement to rehabilitate Lysenko is supported by Putin's revival of Soviet attitudes, as is bringing back ghosts of the past. And once again, science, scientific arguments do not always win over political ones. Uh, what, how much time do I have? Um, I mean, just a, a word about epigenetics. Uh, first of all, Lysenko did not um, invent vernalization, if, I mean, anything. But um, uh, we, we find in um, vernalization after prolonged periods of cold um, that it results in an epigenetic silencing of a floral repressor. And, but this is a very, very complicated process that involves two protein complexes and methylation. But that um, Lysenko was wrong in his claim that these things were uh, inherited and even led to the better results uh, is that, in con um, that the memory of vernalization is not retained in the next generation because it is robustly reset in the germline and early embryo like Edith, Edith Hurd and Robert Martinson wrote some years ago. And the most recent version of neo coism is, in reality, it is a continuation of the old debate between national and global culture in Russia and the political find, fight against the West. As uh, uh, Kolchinsky and others pointed out, the uh, publications, the uh, neo publications, 
were written by authors with questionable qualifications in biology and are largely based on political arguments, for example, to excuse the science of genetics of serving the interests of American imperialism. And uh, Kolchinsky and others then say Lysenkoism is, first of all, a method of inserting ideology into scientific discussions. And I end by saying that Lysenkoism in the past and also today has been the strongest attack on the concept of genetic causality that in my uh, a concept that in my opinion goes ultimately back to Mendel and has uh, brought genetics and all the subsequent developments of molecular genetics to their uh, extreme um, fruitfulness. And this attack is currently being uh, continued by some representatives of epigenetics in Russia, but also in the West. So I thank you for your attention and I'm sorry for this lousy screen.